At its simplest, you could think of an earthquake as a stick breaking. <laughs> as we start to bend the stick, the stick has more and more stress until it breaks. We've just broken six or eight sticks. Each of those sticks broke very differently. That's about the number of damaging earthquakes I've seen over the last 15 years in New Zealand. And every one of those earthquakes has also broken the ground differently. What we want to do is understand what happens if you break a million sticks. What happens if you've had a million earthquakes? We've made a large computer model of New Zealand's faults, and we've applied hundreds of thousands of years of stress to that model to see how those faults break so we can better understand what the next big earthquake might look like. If you think back to the 2016 Kaikoura earthquake, the complexity and the scale of the perils caught a lot of us off guard. We don't want to be off guard for the next big earthquake that happens in a way we aren't expecting. This work is designed to help us understand what's possible in the next big earthquake. We're here with Laura Hughes from Victoria University of Wellington. Um, she's one of our program colleagues, and hopefully, Laura, you can explain to us some of your work. Yes, yeah, so each one of the dots on this map represents an earthquake generated by the earthquake simulator. These dots represent 30,000 years of potential earthquake history that we can use to look at whether the land goes up or down and how that affects the resulting tsunami waves. This was one of the big dreams early on in the program, and now we're seeing it come together and we're actually seeing a pathway toward using this to help New Zealand um, become safer. I'm especially excited about what you're going to show next. Could you talk us through this? Yeah, so what we're seeing here is for each one of those dots that we previously saw, the resulting tsunami and how that affects New Zealand's coast. So what we can see is really small wave heights are in the dark blue, while the reds show significantly large wave heights. We're going to use these events to isolate specific earthquakes and the resulting tsunamis to model the on-land flow and at how far inland they go. Once we better understand the range of possibilities for our next big earthquake, then we'll be better able to prepare for that earthquake and better able to respond to it when it does. We can feed this information into next generation hazard models for both earthquakes and tsunamis. We can use it to test our early warning procedures. Things like next generation building codes or next generation tsunami evacuation zones. We can try to understand how the strong ground shaking from the next big earthquake influences secondary perils like landsliding or liquefaction. All of these things go together to make us safer as a country, and better able to deal with our next big earthquake disaster when it happens.